folks, welcome back to another daily unboxing with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today, we're going to be opening this big guy right here, Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Uh, this is a game that is designed by a number of people, uh, Ivana and Vojkan. Uh, I can't pronounce that upside down. Tony something, Ma and Martin Poole. I, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce those guys. Let's see. Ivana and Vojkan. Uh, Chris, Krzyzewski, Krzyzewski, uh, Tony Toshevsky, Maya Matowska, and Martin Pohl. There, I did the best I could. I'm sorry. Didn't want to leave you guys out though. But anyway, this is one of the games I was really looking forward to the most from Essen. So I'm really super pumped that we finally got it back so that we can actually get it to the table. I did have the opportunity of playing a truncated game of it. Uh, we didn't have enough time for a complete game at that particular moment in time, but uh, we did uh, get to play through a good bit of rounds and I got a good feel for the game. And it turns out that I, I, I did kind of enjoy it, but I need to get to the table some more. Uh, you do have three different game modes. The main one is the semi-co-op mode, and then you also have full co-op, and then you also have a solo version in the game as well. So that's cool. Um, the semi-co-op, yeah, a lot of people don't like it. Uh, I mean, the idea of a semi-co-op game because you have to work together, but only one person wins. And uh, this is one where it really does kind of feel like you must work together. Uh, it's not like you can have just one person that kind of sits off to the side because then you'll lose the game uh, co cooperatively. So uh, this is one of those things where uh, it is semi-co-op, but I think it feels, I don't know, for me, it gets a little bit of a pass. It's not like, uh, you know, something like Dead of Winter or something like that, which is another co-op game or semi-co-op game. So let's go ahead and take this open and take a look. So uh, we've got uh, the rule book here, which is kind of hefty, but as you can see, there are a lot of illustrations uh, throughout the course of the rule book and um, not a whole lot of text. So you're, you're looking at probably a rule book that could have been, you know, uh, condensed down a little bit, but I, I like rule books that do have a lot of uh, pictures and uh, illustrations of what the rules are, are, are trying to teach you. So as you can see there, uh, pretty good looking rule book. Um, then you have the full co-op and solo mode. So these are just the changes that you'll have to make to play full co-op or solo mode as opposed to the semi-co-op rule book. All right, so then you have a bunch of tokens and these are punching out really simply. Uh, so that's good, good design there, good production quality. And then you have a whole bunch of uh, 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 different kinds of tokens. You have green tokens, you have some different spoil tokens that you'll be using. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, tokens uh, as far as uh, coin tokens that you'll also be using to pay for things throughout the course of the game as well. Uh, you have some uh, player aids uh, that are here, like so. And then you also have the actual player boards. And uh, the production quality on these player boards is really neat. It has little uh, uh, recesses, I guess you could call them, that all of the different components are going to be going into as you use these different places throughout the course of the game, or, or you're going to set them up and then you use them, which reveals there are certain things that you're going to get uh, throughout the course. Um, so these player boards are really nice and uh, I really like them. I like it when these little recesses are used. It just helps keep things a little bit more straight and condensed. All right, so uh, we'll get all, all that stuff in just a few moments. I want to set up the board or just pull out the board so that you guys can see it like so. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll move it around a little bit. So of course there you have uh, St. Uh, Prince John's Castle um, and all the stuff that's going on there. And then you have all of these other sites around the corners of the board that you're going to be able to go to, send your uh, merry men to go and, and gather resources and that type of stuff. Um, out through here and then over here on this side of the board you're going to have a lot of the different tracks that are going to be used. This is a reputation track which is used in the semi-co-op mode um, and uh, at the end of the game whoever has the highest reputation I believe is the winner if I remember correctly. It has been a few months. Um, but uh, you have different places where you can go and, and, and uh, uh, attempt different kinds of tests with your dice and you'll get rewards or or not from that. So there's just a lot of really neat things going on in the game. Um, and it has a really nice looking board as well. Now coming back to the components. Now this is a um, uh, this is a little bit of a deluxe version. 
um, because that's what they were giving out. Uh, well, that's what they gave us at least. Um, normally, you're going to have these different things here. Like these uh, barriers are just going to be like uh, wooden sticks. And then there are some other uh, trap tokens in here that are in a regular retail version are just going to be like discs. Um, but uh, for example, you have uh, these trap tokens. Uh, so they actually look like a trap, but in a retail version of the game, it's just going to be like a wooden disc. And then these uh, barrier tokens are going to be just pieces of wood, in this, still in the same colors, uh, but they're just going to be like wood blocks. All right, so there's a difference there. Uh, some of the other uh, things that are going on here, you have uh, these are the Merry Men that each one, each color is going to have at their disposal throughout the course of the game. Uh, they are uh, different kinds of meeples um, as far as they're not the regular meeple shape, so to speak. These are the guards that the Sheriff and Prince John are going to be using uh, that we have to try to get rid of during the course of the game. They're, they're good as well. Um, down here, these are carriages that are going to be carrying different kinds of goods into the city and we're going to try to stop some of those uh, remember we're playing robin hood and his merry men we're trying to uh, ransack some of these uh, you know stealing from the rich giving to the poor all of that good stuff so uh, those are things that will help uh, prince john and hurt the merry men these are some different resources that again are will not be as extravagant looking uh, in the base game, but you have um, tools, wood, and then uh, stone here as well. All right, so uh, that's what these different things are. Hurrah. So that goes back in there along with that guy right there. And then we have some other kind of uh, track tokens that are going to be used. These are bribery tokens, which look like a little uh, beer bottle or mead bottles. And you're also going to have a first player token. Um, and then these are some uh, tokens for uh, denoting different tracks that are on the board in each of the different player colors. So there you have that. All right, let's put all these back. And then, down here we have your actual character meeples that are going to be used throughout the course of the game. And of course you have, um, I don't remember which one is which, but here you have Prince John and, you know, maybe the sheriff and the sheriff's thug. Uh, but these are the bad guys, you know, the ones that are using the muted colors. And then the more vibrant colors, you do have Friar Tuck here. He is a module that you can use in the game. So uh, that's pretty neat. Little Friar Tuck. And these are not... Uh, these are not uh, stickers that you have to apply. These come already applied to the base, uh, which is cool. Good idea. So, yeah. There you have these little meeples, and they look really good. So, and you can use your choice. You can use a male um, or a female, I believe, in most, or maybe not. Um, it looks like blue has a male or female. Red has a male or female. Purple has a male or a female. Um, uh, green uh, has a male or a female. But for some reason, yellow doesn't. So, sorry, Z. Uh, but there you have it. These are the little meeples. These look really cool. All then you also have dice. Uh, the dice are going to, uh, they're etched, they are very angular, which I don't necessarily like, but I do like the fact that they are etched, and they're not like uh, heat transfers or, or, or anything like that. So uh, these are all very nice, nice components. Um, I just wish they weren't as angular as they were. I like, I like more rounded dice, but that's, that's just me. 
Um, oh, yeah, this is the first player token, actually. And this is also, I believe, in the deluxe version. Um, the retail version, I don't think, is going to have this, but this is like a, a metal coin that uh, is a first player token. So it's really nice. It's hefty, too. So that's that. Then you have a whole bunch of plastic baggies to uh, sort those out to your liking. You have a couple of different bags. This is where the um, the carriage bag is going to be coming from. And this is where I believe some of those tokens that I was showing you earlier, uh, some of these little guys right here with the, with the pouch backing on the back of them, you're gonna pull these out from time to time and, and uh, place them randomly on the board. And you also have these uh, decks of cards. And uh, the deck of cards are gonna be doing uh, different things, of course, but um, uh, you have all of your different characters, first of all, Little John, uh, Jane Fortune, uh, Maid Marian, Robin Hood, Will Scarlet, um, and then you have a whole bunch of other uh, different kinds of characters that you're going to be using as your Merry Men throughout the course of the game. I love the artwork. It's that same kind of artwork that uh, is used in the um, Garfield games, the uh, Raiders of the North Sea and, and uh, uh, architects of the West Kingdom and that type of thing. And just, I, I, I don't know why exactly, but I really just enjoy the artwork. I think it's, it's great. It, you know, it's not trying to be too realistic, but at the same time it does still provide thematic flavor. So those are the, uh, merry men that you're going to be using, uh, and women, of course. And, uh, then you have some other kinds of cards that are going to be in the deck. And again, I, I can't remember exactly what all of these do, but I'm just trying to show you the artwork that is in here so that you can get an idea of, of how cool it looks. Maybe you're saying you don't like it. That's fine. Whatever. You can be wrong. More character cards here. Uh, Alain, Aldale, um, Arthur, Achu, <laughs> uh, Barbara Florence, uh, Much the Miller's Son, and Roberto of Loxley. Roberto. Oh, I'm sorry. Roberta of Loxley. There you go. So there you have it. More characters. Let's look at some of these over here. You have uh, some of the different cards that are used in some of the modular expansions like uh, uh, Believe. Let's see here. Yeah. You have uh, some of these that are the Friars, Friar Tux cards and stuff like that. It's used in the expansion. These are different kinds of uh, reputations, um, uh, bonuses and that type of thing that you'll be able to get. Different kinds of... Uh, uh, again, I don't know, remember exactly how it works, but uh, there you have it. i got to read through that rule book again. Uh, this looks like some of the bad dudes that might be coming into the deck and uh, different kinds of uh, event cards, I believe, that are going to be happening throughout the course of the game as well. All right, so uh, that's pretty much what you're going to be getting within the box of Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Thank you for joining us today. We certainly appreciate your time. And we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Thanks for watching. Tune in every day for the Dice Tower's daily game unboxing.